that uh, stirs you into thinking and we have been following you we posted a lot of uh, the things that, uh, that you have been doing around we admire you so much we're, uh, we're full of respect for you and um, uh, we really wanted to be part of what is going on so we have pleaded with the organizers and they allow us and they give us that privilege so I personally consider it a very big privilege to be sitting next to you. Um, you must forgive me sometimes because I see you in so many ways. You are a leader and a highly respected person, but then you're just an ordinary young man like me. So, and, and when I say you are an extraordinary person, brilliant, intelligent, and I accord you the full respect of the leader of the group that you need and for what you have achieved. I really do respect you, but why I like to see you from the perspective of a young man like me is because that inspires me and that inspires people of my generation. I like to present it that way so that they can see that there is no excuse they have in not being able to do what you are doing and even being able to do much more than what you have. Done. So please forgive me if I <coughs> oscillate between those those uh, viewpoints of you. Let me go straight into the interview. I don't want to sound stupid because I know what you stand for. Prior to you having the runnings that you had with the Nigerian government to the point where you were um, where you were kidnapped by the Nigerian military. But why are you angry? Why are you upset? Anybody who is, um, anyway, first of all, thank you very much for, <coughs> for having me. And um, while I acknowledge um, many of the compliments that you paid me, one I have to respectfully decline is the issue that I'm a young man and that's um, um I'm old because I am in my early 50s. But of course, it's a very good thing as well. <clears throat> Where we come from, when you're older than somebody by two years, you say that person is, is a small boy, a small girl, as the case may be. Um, it's very African. Yes. Uh, thank you very much. Anybody who is unfortunate enough to have encountered Nigeria at least from 1970. Should I say from 1966, as a matter of fact, she was very angry. My anger is um, wasn't generated spontaneously. It's something that came over many years and many decades of brutal oppression and repression of our people. Something that I witnessed as a child who made left at the war how my village was turned upside down by the same Nigerian military. So the encounter in my house on the 14th of September of 2017 is nothing new. It's something that we've become accustomed to. 
the military coming into villages and them doing whatever they like. Because in their eyes, we are a conquered people. And when you are a conquered people, you have only one avenue, which is to fight back. And in most instances, the only fuel that you need is the rage and anger you feel, not against them, but against the injustice and the system of oppression which they have come to represent. Mine is uh, more like righteous indignation. I, I'm not happy about the level of repression, the level of mediocrity, the level of poverty, the level of hopelessness and also backwardness, not just in Nigeria but across the entire Sub-Saharan Africa. And it gives me a cause for concern because some of the universities that the leaders of the civilized world attended were in Canada today. Most of the universities that they went to, some of these African leaders went to the same schools as well. So I'm beginning to wonder when they taught the same subjects or the same discipline, why must things be different? Why, why must we be so backward in Africa? Why don't we have any pride, no shame, nothing? So the source of my anger is quite numerous, it's not just one, but the silver bullet for me is Biafra. The emancipation of the people of Biafra will put to bed most of these um, rather negative things that we've come to associate with black people and black mentality. So mine is way deeper than what other people see. The fact that we are the lowest people in the world by virtue of every human measurement or indices. We are the lowest of the low. The poorest countries of the world are in Africa. The most repressive backward regimes in the world are in Africa. The most politically naive people are in Africa. That gives me a cause for concern and that is why I'm very angry. Um, prior to the, the movement, the IPOB movement, you, I followed you, I went back to study you, and there, were, there was a time when you were in the streets of UK charging other Nigerians, not actually carrying the Nigerian flag. At what, so it looked to me like, I, I just want uh, to, to be able to understand. I saw you then trying to defend Nigeria. And at what point did it for you where you said, you know what, I, I am done with these people? In defense of Nigeria wouldn't sound quite right. Okay. I think that most people that refer to that video or that very gathering in London, which I organized, quoted me out of context. I arranged or I organized the protest in London that encompassed everybody who claims he or she is a Nigerian to campaign against or to speak out against what Boko Haram was doing, against the imperialist Fulani oligarchy. Most people came because they felt agreed. They said they were Nigerians and they you know, wanted to come to be part of it. I consulted far and wide. And I spoke at that very occasion as well. It wasn't intended to convey any sense of, you know, patriotism on my part towards Nigeria, not at all. But we are reacting to a series of events that shouldn't have happened in the first place. In this instance, what the Boko Haram people were doing to innocent people back home, especially the Igbos that were massacred and murdered, if I'm not mistaken. So that gave birth to it. And also, <clears throat> it served a very useful purpose to gauge the sincerity of Nigerians towards fighting what was obviously um, immense and evil, more or less. Uh, but as time went on, um, I discovered that um, the country was unsolvable. They're trying to campaign for equity and justice. Nigeria was, it was an exercise in futility. That knowing things down to your own people would be a far better way of um, doing things rather than trying to 
save those who are unsavable, so to speak. During the Python dance, you were you were harassed, your members were killed, you were you you, you were kidnapped, we nobody knew where you were, your parents were tortured, your dog was shot. Why are you still doing what you do? Why are you not scared? What what is driving you? Um, as I said, it's righteous indignation. Um, I believe that the only people that could possibly make positive and lasting impact in the lives of black people, the Africans, no other people can do that. Only us can in Africa. <coughs> we have a divine mission, a purpose. The reason we I tend to approach my belief in Biafra and what I do, or my tenacity if you put it that way, to my reading of the promise of God on the lives of Biafran people. In other words, what we are doing is not temporal. It is spiritual. That I am the way I am is because God allowed me to be so in order to fulfill this very purpose, in order to carry out this very mission. And that is why we are not going to stop, and that is why IPOB is virtually indestructible by man. And that is why I speak with every certainty and authority that Biafra will come, because I will never ever stop. Regardless of the obstacle, regardless of the attempt at inducement, regardless of the frustrations, regardless of the lies, there is nothing on this earth. If you bring me the sun and the moon, I won't stop until the Afra comes. Because I understand what the Afra represents. Who will damn it? I do. That the Afra is the only singular hope for black people on this very earth. Without Biafra, they think there is no God. But I know there is, and that's where Biafra will come. You sound very, very convinced in what you're saying. But let me ask you, and that's a little confusion, has Biafra become a religion and I'm going to ask you, I'm going to tell you why I say this. When IPOB is uh, conducting their evangelism, mm -hmm. and when you are gathered, um, at the end of, you know, from time to time, you say things like you say, and um, I attribute, I, I want an explanation, because some people think, are you trying to mix, uh, uh, what, just let me hear from you. Explain to us why you have to say Isi and why you seem to adopt some kind of uh, uh, religious rites of the Jewish uh, faith. What is IPOP turning into? Or what is it? I just want uh, people to understand what is going on. IPOP is a political, social, and spiritual movement. He say is what our ancestors used to say when they prayed. In terms of the accusation of Judaism, or should I say, the coloring of Judaism, what we're doing, are people that don't quite understand what it means to be a Biafra. Before the white man came, there's a place called Arachubu. Yeah. In that Arachubu, there was a temple. Our ancestors used to go there. They used to sell their first, you know, every family would sell their first son to go to Arachubu to go and study the scriptures. And that Arachubu we used to worship Chubu Hikabia. If you're familiar with the cultures of the Bende people, Arachubu, for instance, and Ohafia and 
that break, but there's something called bend the waters. I'm sure you know that. Mm -hmm. If you listen to them very well, the first person or the first entity they call is Chico Picabia. Only before they go to battle in those days. Because you remember that Harry Chuku was um, filled with Tibibia people that they were driven out as, as the people came. Yeah. In Harry Chuku, we had a temple. We worshipped only one true God. One true God. We circumcised on the eighth day after a male child is born. The only other people that does that are the Jews. Exactly. We use the names we give our children to praise Almighty God in heaven. What is your name again? Chikudimai. <coughs> that means God is good. <laughs> Who are the only other people that praise God with the name they give their children? I know the Jews do that. Absolutely. Because Jesus, which is Yeshua, means Jezebel. That's what it means which is an Igbo name, which is a Biafra name. So, in effect, what you're trying to say is that um, IPOB, or the gospel of IPOB, is a gospel of going back to what, um, the, what Biafras were originally, and not really about adopting another person's religion. Absolutely. The talent that we were, is that one minute? It's everywhere. If you grew up in the village, you see old people where yeah. it in those days. Yeah. It's there. Not my grandfather Eri, that is mentioned in the Bible. There is a place called Omo Eri. Hmm? The children of Eri. Where the Star of David was buried at the British farm in 1952 and incorporated into their coin that they used in Nigeria. These things are there. They are historical facts, indelible. This idea that we should be ashamed of who we are, I find very pathetic. When a Fulani man pledges allegiance to Saudi Arabia and Islam, that is no question. But when we identify with our own people, the Jews of Israel, then there is a problem. I think there is something wrong with people that makes such distinction, not us. We are on the right path. And that is why I said IPOB is indestructible. Because the hand of God is in it. Thank you. Do you see IPOB as a leading force in bringing, in the restoration of Biafra, whereby you also accommodate other people who seem to be fighting for the same cause? Or do you see anybody who is not fighting on the side of IPOB as anti biafra If you're not fighting with IPOB, then you are misguided. I wouldn't call you anti biafra but I would say that you're doing it the wrong way. And that is why there is no preeminent movement of this sort that Elohim has managed to build in IPOB anywhere in the world. I am in Canada. I'm not sure there is any other so-called pro biafra group that can tour the world the way that I do and be received in every country with such enthusiasm as I have been received, not just in United States America, but also here in Canada. These are some of the pointers and factors that one needs to look at before trying to judge. People sometimes get up in the morning and say, I want to form a movement. I never wanted to lead IPOB. I never started off to form an IPOB, but it was created by the Almighty Himself. And here we are today. That very promise of Biafra restoration in truth and in every honesty is what we pursue. Others may try, but they can never be like us. Because we have the key. Recently, some other groups, some other tribes, 
I don't know the authentic the authenticity of it, but um, it's been circulating that uh, some people are trying to also um, campaign for for their own secession or uh, independence from from the Nigerian um, from Nigeria as a country. Can you speak to that? I can, insofar as I say welcome to them. They were those uh, at the forefront of the smear campaign to discredit IBOB, to tag me in my man and all the rest of it. But after about seven years, they've come to their senses. They've now realized that IPOB and its leadership has been right all along. Now, that thing we saw seven, nine years ago, they're only seeing now. So we are the visionaries. We see things that others cannot see. And that is the good thing about IPOB. Eventually, they'll also come to agree that Buhari is dead and bred in Saudi Arabia. That the young man, the 45 year old that you're seeing there, who heavily made up to look like Buhari, is indeed Jubril Amin, or Sudani from Sudan. Um, it may take time, but the truth will be revealed. That I can assure you. We see things that people don't see, not because we are any different or exceptional, but because we have that very gift. Because Chuko Gikabia is in charge of IPOB. I am not ashamed of saying it. When I get interviewed by Europeans, by other media outlets in the West, I tell them the same thing. Without God, Giafra cannot come. As simple as ABC. If those seeking to push us towards the realm of, you know, secularity, so to speak, as I want to be secular, you know, away from all these things, uh, then I ask them, why do you name your children Chukwode? Why must, must God be central to everything that you do? Why don't you name them something like, you know, Ubute, you know, the way the right man has a stone and the rest of it. So we cannot deny who we are. It's about time um, when you stood up and be very proud of our heritage. Thank you so much. I know you've had a very busy day. I don't want to keep you, but can you plot for us what is the, um, what's the trajectory? Where is IPOB going to? You know, We're heading towards freedom. When do you think this will come? It depends on when the time is right. It is not for us to decide. Our duty is to keep pushing. To keep pushing. And that I'll show you what we're going to do until the are is restored. We cannot stop. We cannot um, seek to slow down what we're doing. We are going to continue until we succeed. And we can stop us. We don't know when, but it's not going to be long. I'm going to ask you a question that I'm not sure I'm going to get an answer to, but uh, permit me to ask you, because it's a big puzzle. Yeah. The last time during the, during the, the, what was it, Python dance operation, the last time we saw you was, uh, you were outside, you know, there was a video of you talking about how, look at what they did to my people, you know, and then, we saw another video of um, the bombarding of uh, your house, you know. And we didn't see you, we didn't hear from you. And the next time we were to hear from you was in Israel. Can you tell us what happened between that time? <laughs> I was um, taken away by my man, I lost a little. Sorry, can you say that again? I was shielded from the onslaught of the enemy that resulted in the death of my man. And um, I sustained injuries. I was taken away from my compound and then um, secured somewhere. And then 
made my way to Israel. So you guys said it for the first time on worship media, what actually happened to Namdi Kano after the, the Scorpion Dance Invasion, because uh, it's been a big mystery, but today we revealed it to you. So that's, I feel privileged that, you, that you're actually talking about it like this, because people there have so many uh, conspiracy theories about it. And uh, I personally was very worried when uh, Chairman Four who I must commend is a very fantastic human being because uh, even though I was not a member of uh, IPOB, the way he handled things here, and I confronted him with the question when he was here, I said, where is Nami Kano? And he just said, Chidi, why don't you go ask the people that, <laughs> that uh, uh, bombarded his, his residence? So, but uh, when you finally surfaced in Israel, it was a big relief to a lot of us here. I, I want to let you know that um, there was a day, you remember, I, I called uh, Jerry, I called Emenike, I called Fabian, and uh, we were all crying on the phone. It was like, uh, I told them, man, I'm not sure these guys are alive. And that's how passionate all of us are here. And uh, we, are all, we all have this Biafra in our heart. Um, I was, I'm a child of the Biafran War. I was born in uh, 1969, the day they bombed uh, the Queen Elizabeth Hospital of Panama here. I've said that story a lot of times. My mother yeah, just removed me from my mother's uh, womb and kept me in a, in a crib. And uh, while the doctors were stitching her up, uh, the, the jet fighters came and then they started the shooting. Yeah, shooting everywhere. And the doctors abandoned my mom. And she clutched her tummy, which was still open. She rolled up from the theater, went and dragged me down from where I was and lay over me while all that was happening until uh, the doctors that survived, because a lot of them were killed until they came back and continued. So that's why the Biafran story is it's something that I don't joke with. And that's why I'm passionate about that. On behalf of um, Worship Media and um, all of our followers, I really want to thank you for what you do. Um, I we may all not not agree hundred percent on everything, and I think there's room for that. But the passion is the same thing. Uh, like uh, Tim Okafor had said before, I contested for governorship on the uh, African Action Congress, but that was my way of trying to also um, show resistance with what was happening back home and my displeasure. But I want to really thank you for what you do. Um, and I want to pray that your mission will be successful and we will continue to to we will continue to support in whatever way possible. And now uh, a lot of our viewers said I must ask you about um, the, 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 the the story that was online, the you know the, the video yes. <laughs> that circulated. Yes. But you'd be surprised. When the video came out, instead of there being a lot of negative uh, things about it, a lot of our female uh, viewers just said, oh my goodness, they never knew you, you had that soft, so, that so, soft so part. <laughs> yes, you were very, very romantic. But would you want to say anything about that video? Was it, was it fake? Was that really you? Or was it photoshopped? No, it, it's me. It was in my phone that was stolen in 2013 that, um, you know, found its way into the hands of the of DSS and they wanted to embarrass me. Um, but we've proven to them that nothing like that can ever say. It doesn't matter what people do. Seriously speaking, it doesn't matter what they come up with. We just continue doing what we're doing. It was very low of them to do it. But I also thank them for doing it because um, at least now, I'm sure most people that didn't know me before now, they know. Most people that never knew how beautiful my wife was, now we know how beautiful she is. That is, a, that is the thing. So there's always a silver lining somewhere. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Yeah, they'll keep trying. Try all these nonsense now and again, but we'll never work. We'll yeah. continue working. Yeah, yeah. And thank you so much. And a lot of people don't think that you see that 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 man is always shouting that man is always i mean to see you 
this close and see that you're a handsome man. And then, <laughs> and then you're calm and uh, you're actually soft spoken. It's all very surprising to me. But um, I really commend you for that. And thank you so much for coming uh, uh, to speak with us on Worship Media. Uh, thank you. And please keep doing what you're doing. We, we support you in every way. We're inspired by what you're doing and we'll continue um, to assist every way. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you for having me. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. And uh, from all of us here in Worship Media, uh, this is Chidi signing out. Thank you.